Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel and today we're going to be blinging a pill bottle. So if you ever have any old bottles, you don't have to get rid of them. Or if you want to just start selling them as stash bottles, here's how you make them. So if you want to see how we do this process, please stay tuned to the video. And if you're new to my channel, please subscribe. And if you're back, hey, I missed y'all. Just keep on watching. Okay, so we're going to start with your pill bottle, of course. I bought mine brand new. A wax pen, liquid fusion, alcohol prep pad, sandpaper. This is 60 grit. And then I have my sorting trays with my stones. I'm using 3M ivory and then 4M in topaz. And I just have two trays ready for my extra stones needed. So I'm going to start by taking off my top and sanding the bottle to prep it. And then we're also going to prep the top as well. So you're just going to sand the top and you're just giving it a, a surface to stick to. So you're just going to lightly sand it. And the ones I used, these bottles had like raised words, but it didn't affect anything. So you can always use it with like a... You know, the ones that don't have it. And then we're just going to take the alcohol prep and wipe off the sandy, <laughs> where we sand it to get rid of the dirt and the debris. And do the same for the top. And then you're just going to let it dry for a second. And then you can begin the process. So I like to start with my, starting at the top of my bottles. That way it has a nice even line throughout it'll be nice and even and i'm doing a honeycomb method if you don't know what the honeycomb method is it is where you are going to basically be putting one roll inside of another so we're doing the honeycomb method and then we're going to start at the top like i said we're going to start at the top making little lines i didn't, didn't you can use a precision tip it'll probably be a little easier but i didn't need to for what i was doing and i just put my fingers inside the bottom and you're just going to go one by one until you have your first line so once you accomplish your first line you're gonna want to let it dry and this is you let it dry so that your other rows won't cause it to move your lines will be nice and straight and even and while you're applying these stones you want to make sure that they're just how you want them you like you want to make sure there's no overlapping none of your stones are on top of each other that the glue isn't like your glue isn't spilling out underneath it you're going to want to clean up any glue that goes from underneath the stones because whenever you're putting the other row inside of it it'll cause for issues so you'll see me my stone came up so you just see me put it back in place and you'll also see me wiping out extra glue throughout so like i said doing using a precision tip will make this a little easier of course you don't have to use it for this but it'll make it easier so again, we're just going to keep going one by one until we can get through the first row. And you see here, my wax tip head dry. So if it's having, you're having trouble picking up stones, just take your finger and wipe off that top layer of wax and just warm it up a little bit. And I found that it works really well at getting your wax pen to pick up your stones.
So as we come to the end of this first row, we want to make sure that everything is straight and placed just how we want it because we're going to sit it down to dry so that we can continue working on the rest. So I'm just checking to make sure, moving things as I see that they need to be moved. And once I'm completely happy with the way that it's placed, I'm just going to set it off to the side and we're going to start working on the cap. So I got it how, how I like it and I'm going to take my 3M crystals in the color ivory. And I like to put the whole, fill the whole cap with glue, like not like a pool of the glue, but I like to cover the cap with glue. That way I can work as I, because I go pretty fast with the caps, like it doesn't take long at all. So we're just going to go in with the cap, the glue <laughs> on the caps. I say glue still. Anyway, we're just going to go in with the rhinestones on the caps. And I like to start around the edges. And as we go along the edges, we're going to start to fill in. So as you can see, I'm just going down the curve. And then I start to place inside of the curve. So when we're doing this, instead of like doing the honeycomb method, I guess you can call it like a scatter method or a, fill, a sprinkle method. And it's basically where you put the stone inside of where it was originally. Okay, so as you fill in the stones, you want to make sure that they're not overlapping and that you do have enough glue underneath it to continually place. If your glue starts to dry, it is completely okay. Just add a little bit more and you don't have to do it like this. You can always just go and add it little by little. Like using a precision tip would be best if you're doing it little by little. That way you don't get glue on top of the stones that you already did. Like I said, I move pretty fast with it. So... Even if my glue does start to dry, I just add a little bit more and then I keep going. You keep pushing through it. Like it doesn't take long. When I first started making these, the whole process would take me an hour or so. But like as you continue to do it, you get faster and faster. Like I want to say I finished this bottle in 30 minutes. That's from start to finish. You know, it, it, it just, it's a learning curve, you know, be, be jeweling, be dazzling or rhinestone and blinging whatever you want to call it it's just a work in progress you know like here as I moved it out the camera I was just adding a little bit more glue and just keep going and you begin to fill in that process like I fill in and then I go around as I start to fill in more I start to add more around the edges that way I can keep a, cons a consistent look like I don't want to leave too many spots on the outside like the goal is to have it as filled in as possible now, I do want to talk about this. Whenever you choose the color of your stone, it's always best to choose the color of the background because there will be gaps in between the stones. Like, you, you won't be able to fill it in completely. So, you want to have a background that matches. If you want to use a different color stone, that is okay. Just try to either use the Sharpie method, which is like coloring it in as you go. And you can do it like that. There's an epoxy, like a two-part epoxy, and you'll color the epoxy and apply it like that. And that way, you'll have that background matching. Like, I'll make a video later about the epoxy method and the Sharpie method and stuff. You'll see me use it. So, just keep in mind, whatever color you choose. Like, I have two different colors, personally, that I've done with the, top, the uh, orange bottles. I've done a topaz. And then I've done a orange AB. So you just always want to keep in mind what colors, you know, that go best with your bottle. You can always get different color bottles. I sell a pink bottle, purple bottle, blue bottle, clear bottle, and a black bottle on my Etsy shop. So if you ever want a specific color bottle personally that you would like, just I'll link it down below so you can have access to it. That way you can get the color that you want. Of course, you don't have to buy it from me. It's just, you know, if you want that color specifically and you don't want to buy 50 million on Amazon. So I'll leave that in the description below. But as you can see, I'm almost done. Now, you will have to move around the stones a little bit to fit in. So you see me pushing down to make sure that that stone is flat and then I'll move it. Like, that's why it's best to do it all at once. That way you can... Make sure that your stones fit while the glue is still damp and they're not stuck in one place. Don't get me wrong, the glue will start to harden, but you'll still have a little wiggle room to where you can move the stones. 
So now that I'm finished with the cap, we can go back to the bottle. Now, we're gonna start the honeycomb method. Now you see how the stones are placed. We're gonna begin by placing one stone in between two stones, if that makes sense, as I describe it. Like you're about to see me do it. So we're just gonna add our line of glue. And then we're gonna pick up a stone and we're gonna place it in between two stones. So you see how I did it? We place it in between and then we're gonna keep going and it makes the honeycomb effect. I want you guys to keep going all the way down the bottle with the honeycomb method. You're just going to follow this pattern the whole way down. Don't get discouraged if the first time you do it, it doesn't look that pretty. Just keep trying. It's going to get better and better the more that you do it. So just follow this video. I'm going to speed it up for you guys. And then I'm going to come back and talk to you as we get closer to the end.
So we are approaching the end of this project and we have done honeycomb all the way down the bottom the bottle and you can see that they all fit inside of each other beautifully and you just want to make sure that your last row lines up perfectly and you're just going to keep working your way around until you are finished and here is the finished product you guys we have a beautiful bling bottle let your prowls dry for 24 hours completely and if you guys like this video please give it a thumbs up if you haven't subscribed already please subscribe and i'll see you guys on the next one bye